In this episode of Paint Society, we're gonna teach you how to prepare old, faded, and cracked paint on your own project. We're gonna show you the process of stripping down that paint using a chemical stripper and how to properly remove all of that paint once it's all been stripped. From there, we'll dive into some sandblasting to get the old rusted chips off, and we'll protect that paint job using an epoxy primer. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this episode, so let's get started. Now, if your project is old and cracked and a paint is just dead, you need to remove it from the panel. Now, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is get some 80 grit to scuff up the panel so when we use our paint stripper, the paint stripper can absorb into those sand scratches and do a much better job. My rule of thumb is if the part can come off of the car, then I'm going to use a chemical stripper. It's much cleaner, it's much easier, and it's much more efficient. Now, once you get everything blown off, you don't wanna leave any glossy spots because the paint stripper is gonna do a much better job getting into those areas if it is scuffed up. The paint stripper we're gonna be using is Aircraft Ultra, and I emphasize Ultra. If you're not using Ultra, it is not gonna work the same way. Since they remove the methylene chloride from paint strippers, they have not been the same. Well, Ultra has come up with some sort of regeneration of the recipe, and let me tell you, it works just like the old. You need to cover up, you need to wear gloves, you need to wear a mask and you need to, need to throw that mask away when you're done because it will be ruined. This stuff is extremely strong. Now the way that you put it on is you need to lather it on thick. If you're not using it thick so that there's a puddle of paint stripper sitting on top of the panel thick, it is not going to work properly. Now I'm going to give you some tips along the way to help you get everything stripped in one pass as much as possible. We're just using a cheap paintbrush here and we're just brushing it on and trying to get it nice and even. Then after that, we're gonna cover it with plastic. Now the plastic is gonna trap all those solvents and all the paint stripper back into the hood. It has nowhere to escape or to evaporate or to dry. It's gonna stay wet. Now, quick pro tip, I like to take my spreader once I cover it and take the paint stripper and move it towards the edges of the hood. This way we can get the full paint stripping to all the edges because what likes to happen is that paint stripper will wanna go towards the center of the panel. So in this case, once it's protected with plastic, then we can move it and it's gonna stay in that area. Then if you see any areas that are a little bit dry, pull your plastic up and you can apply a little bit more paint stripper cover it back up and then you can use your spreader from there to disperse it evenly. Now this is really going to help you out to get the best possible strip so you don't have to go back and use a stripper. Now after 30 minutes, you must wait 30 minutes and no sooner. Once you wait 30 minutes, then at that point you can see that the stripping is going to be at least 95% done at that point as far as the paint removed from the hood. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna throw it away. Now a lot of folks think that chemical stripping is messier. Well, it depends how your procedure is. You can see how well it stripped up all that paint. If you were to do this by mechanically by using a sander, you're gonna have dust everywhere and you take the chance of warping the panel. So I'm just easily gonna get my spreader. I'm gonna pop it right into the garbage can. You can see that there's actually nothing in the environment. It's going right into the waste bin and that is exactly it. We have a nice clean strip. Now there's some processes that we'll go into when we're done with getting all the strip paint off of the hood. We'll get into in just a moment, but you wanna make sure you get as much as possible. You can see some of the paint stripper is gonna remain towards the edges just a little bit. That is what happens sometimes the paint stripper just does not pile up or stay in that spot. But we got a nice strip using that little method to get as much as paint off of the edges as we possibly could. I do also believe that chemically stripping is much quicker. We only have about maybe 10 minutes of working time into this actual panel with 30 minutes of waiting. So the labor time, you can go and do something else while the paint is stripping. Now we're using an old towel to get off all of the residue of the excess uh, paint stripper from the panel. Now we're using a prep solvent. We're using a wax and grease remover to remove all of the residue and neutralize the panel and get that all off because our next point that we're going to be doing is sanding the remainder of that paint stripper. Yes, you could go back and put a little bit more paint stripper on, but at this point, they're just little areas that the paint is already weakened and we're just going to sand it off and it's not going to take long at all. So once you get everything nice and neutralized using that wax and grease remover, then we can move on to the next step. I'm gonna be using an 80 grit with my Dewalt rotary sander. Now this thing can be a little dangerous, and this is what I would use if I was not chemically stripping, but this will remove the paint and it will remove it quick. You notice that I use the interface pad there. 
This is to soften up the scratch and it helps to really conform to the hood a little bit and remove that paint much quicker. Sometimes when you have just the hard pad, it can only work a small area, but when you use the interface pad, it really increases that surface area on the sander to get to as much paint as possible. Now, being that this hood is over 20 years old, there is some rock chips that do have a little bit of surface rust. So we're gonna be using a sandblaster, a very inexpensive one with 100 and grit fine sand. Now, this will go ahead and remove any of that rust in the chip and it works very, very well. Now, you could use a wire brush. I just find that the sand really helps completely remove anything that is left in that small pit that is caused by the rock chip and you don't have to worry about it because if you don't remove it now, it will rust through your paint later. So it's very important to get everything removed now. Next up, we're gonna be using P180 and look, we're using the DA sander. This is gonna be a much finer, smoother scratch than that rotary sander. You gotta be careful. If you get the rotary sander, it works very well, but you don't wanna finish it with it before epoxy. Now the 180 is gonna leave a nice surface for that epoxy primer to go down. So you won't have to worry later about the epoxy primer soaking into the metal and anything showing up later. I think P180 is an appropriate sand scratch for putting down your epoxy. Now, once more, we're gonna get that prep solvent out. You wanna be quick with this. You can notice at any point in this video, of never touching the panel with my bare hand, always wearing my gloves. Now, you can see from the point that we stripped this, we put it right into the booth. You don't wanna leave metal out in the open. We stripped it about maybe 10 minutes ago. It's moved into the paint booth. We're ready for epoxy. The epoxy primer we're going with is the Eastwood. It's the one-to-one. -one. That means basically one part of epoxy to one part of catalyst. So I use six ounces of epoxy and six ounces of the catalyst. I mix it together, I have a total of 12. At that point, we're gonna be using a 1.8 with a 3M PPS cup and a 3M PPS paint performance gun. I really like this gun because it's easy to clean out and you can change your tips really easily. Now I'm gonna put on one coat. Now I want you guys to all realize and know something that the epoxy must go down on the metal hood to protect the metal first, even if it has dents. If you have any metal work that needs to be done, you do it first, you get the metal as good as possible, and then you epoxy it. The epoxy is the base that the filler goes over. So this is going to get filler on top of it once it dries after 24 hours, it's gonna get filler on top of it, and then it's going to get sanded, and then any areas that are cut down to metal again, it's going to get epoxied again in those areas. You can see there's dents all in this area that will get some minor body filler, but you must first get the epoxy down so this hood does not rust again. If you put the body filler over metal, you could have issues in the future as far as rust coming back up. So we got epoxy down, we're gonna put two coats so it has a little bit of a build so it can hold up a little bit better to that 180 grit when we go to sand that filler. So we'll put this down. Now you wanna at least allow 24 hours to let this epoxy dry, probably maybe even a longer, maybe 48 hours. And I like to give it a little scuff up. Maybe I'll give it a scuff up with 180 grit in the areas where I'm going to put that filler. And then from there I'll do my filler work I'm inspecting right now, I'll do my filler work over that sanded epoxy. And then from that point, any areas that are bare metal, I will go ahead and I will put my epoxy down on that. Once everything is sanded, then you can go into your 2K urethane surfacer primer, that high build primer that is meant to be sanded and blocked for paint. Hey guys, if you like this video, stay tuned to more videos or check other videos out where we have more of the process. But I want to show you guys how you can get your panels ready and protected for body filler. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. We'll see you guys on the next episode.